G'day everyone, it's Matthew Scudder here with SkySight. So today we're going to talk about how you might read a forecast and set a task of that forecast. So I put together a little checklist which will be in the notes down below, which I recommend you use just for running through the different things you should check. So I'll just read it out here for you quickly. We're going to look at the start of thermals, the end of thermals, we're going to look at the potential flight distance plot, we're going to have a look at the cumulus clouds, the cloud cover, we're going to have a look at the winds and on the ground and up high. We're going to have a look for any potential convergences in our task area. We're going to check for things like mid-level cloud and high-level cloud. We're going to check for overdevelopment. And then finally, we're going to validate that, our understanding of the weather with a skew T. Once we've done all of that, we can pretty safely plan a task and know we're not going to get caught by any traps. So first, let's try and find the start of thermals. So we'll go all the way to the beginning of the day, 9 a.m. And we're just going to hit play. Let's uh, have a look at the depth of thermals rather than the height of thermals. So the depth of thermals is just the same as the height, but it's above ground rather than above sea level, which is a little bit more useful if you're soaring from an inland site where the ground level isn't sea level. So we can see already at 10 o'clock there's a bit of development here. It's maybe 2,000, 2,500 feet. We can just right click to have a look at how high, 2,500 feet. Not really high enough to go cross country, but possibly high enough to launch. And we can see by 11.30, it's gotten a little bit better. It's now 3,500 feet. It's still not going great. Let's see if the day gets any better. And coming around to 1 o'clock, we're starting to see a bit of a better day. So have another click. And we're up to 5,500 feet, which is plenty for just about anyone to go cross-country in. We just go back to 12.30 for a more likely launch time or yeah, 4,500 feet, still high enough to get underway. And now we'll just play again and we'll try and figure out when the end of the day is. So it keeps getting better and better. And around about five o'clock, it looks like it's weakening off. And 6.30, it's totally dead. So it's quite an unusual day for Queensland. We are actually in the Sydney time zone here. Let's change that across to the Queensland time zone, which just changes the time slightly. So we can see day starting around about 12 o'clock and packing in. This layer switches off pretty suddenly about 5 o'clock. So we'll make it... Um, We'll make it 12.30 until 4.30 as our pretty safe soaring window. We'll just check the thermal strengths. So let's have a look back at 12.30. It's already looking good there. It's looking good quite a while before that. And all the way through the day, you can see quite quickly at 4.30 it starts to get weaker. Now we do have a new plot, it is a little bit experimental at the moment, but soon it'll be the default plot when you log in, which just gives you an idea of what SkySight thinks the potential flight distance might be. So all these different colours here match up to the scale here, which tells you from each location roughly how far SkySight thinks you might be able to fly. So SkySight is suggesting maybe from John Darien today, 350 kilometres, 400 kilometres or so. And that's in an 18 meter Ventus. So it's not really a great day. It should be okay though. Now let's have a look at the cumulus. So at 11.30, no cumulus. 12.30, we're just starting to get this little light stippling here. So this light stippling indicates the possibility of sparse isolated Q. It's not predicting extensive cloud cover. Out here, it's predicting a nice little line of Q forming. And that's starting to fill in. By 1 o'clock, it's predicting some solid Q over John Darien. And that fills out quite quickly through the day. And then rapidly disappearing about 4.30, 5 o'clock again. So it's looking quite good. It should be a nice day. It's also worth looking at the boundary layer cloud cover. So this tells us roughly the relative thicknesses of the clouds. So quite sparse early in the day, and then developing up to quite thick, and there's some patches of very thick cloud out here. 100% doesn't necessarily mean all of the sun is blocked over off from the ground, and it just means extensive cloud cover.
so not necessarily quite eight eighths. And you might notice there's a bit of action happening here, which is probably some overdevelopment. We're going to talk about how to identify overdevelopment a little bit later on. So now I've got an idea of when the thermals start, when the thermals end, and where the cumulus will be. Let's have a bit of a look at the wind. So there's a couple of ways you can look at the wind in SkySight. The first way is the live wind, which just turns on some little particles that drift across the map. So the colour of the particles represents the temperature of the air, so you'll often see cool blue particles coming off the ocean and hot red particles coming up from northern Australia. And you can see it's prevailing northerly flow. So this forecast is just for slightly above ground, I think it's 10 metres above ground. And we also have some other plots of wind as well. Now the plots here are much more accurate than the particles. So the particles are really just meant to be indicative. The plots here have much, much more detail. And we've got a number of plots. We've got one for just above ground level, two metres above ground level. We've got one which is the average across the boundary layer. And we've got one which is at the top of the boundary layer. Now I get a lot of people asking me what is the boundary layer. So the boundary layer is the layer of turbulent air near the ground which contains all of our thermals. So roughly the top of thermals, height of thermals, is the top of the boundary layer, quite approximately. It's usually a little bit higher than that because the highest we can get in the thermals is not quite the very top themselves. So we'll turn off the particles now. It looks like it's light north, northeasterly flow. Maybe five, 10 knots on the ground. And we just check against the end of the day as well, check there's nothing coming through. And across the middle of the boundary layer, a little bit lighter, so oh, about the same, 10 knots still. And at the top of the boundary layer, it's quite interesting, there's actually very little wind at all, so it's quite abnormal that. Normally you'll get winds getting stronger with height. We're now going to have a little look at convergences, see if we can spot any convergences in the task area. So convergences will show up here as a darker line or a purple line. So it doesn't look like there's much going on in this case. But you can see a little bit of a convergence maybe up near Fraser Island perhaps, but nothing really applicable to our task. I'll do some more videos which demonstrate how to identify a convergence. You can see there's something happening further down south near Sydney. It's important we check uh, for all the possible gotchas. So the classic one is high cloud, not realizing there is high cloud coming in. We just have a zoom out and we can see there's some high cloud well down to the southwest and through the day that's moving rapidly east, but it's not coming anywhere near us. It's also worth checking mid-level clouds, so mid-level cloud much lower than high-level cloud. And again, we can see that is maybe slightly coming closer, but it's still well outside our task area. So it's not really a concern for our flight today. Now let's have a look at that overdevelopment. So we thought we saw a little bit of overdevelopment before and I'll show you how we identify that. So I have a look at the Q cloud base about three o'clock there. And now we just flick over to overdevelopment. So this is a measure of roughly how deep the cumulus are expected to be or how much moisture there will be. So zero to 20% is indicating pretty low levels. So not really a concern at all. All of this just here. But a bit further east, we're seeing some slightly darker greens. So the 20 to 40% range, you might expect that this cumulus are possibly going to impact your speed and that it might be shading off the ground or it might be very difficult to pick up a thermal if you're down low. And if we see even higher than values than that, up near 40, 50, 60%, then it may well be totally unsoarable. So out here, possibly expecting quite unsoarable overdevelopment. That's a long way out of our task today. One thing to watch out for here is you might see there's some patches here where it looks like the overdevelopment has stopped. They look like little holes in the overdevelopment. And you can sometimes see them on the thermal plot as well. You might see these little holes here. There's actually a better example today, just a little bit further out west. You can see there's these enormous blue holes that have opened up in the perfectly soarable area. And if we look on the overdevelopment plot, it shows there's no overdevelopment there. So what's going on? What's actually happened here is that has overdeveloped. So earlier in the day, that would have been a nice line of potential overdevelopment, and that has exploded and it's now completely dead. There's no more overdevelopment there, it's just dead. And we can identify this pretty simply on the height of thermals. So it's just a thing to watch out for, when, particularly when you have nice cumulus forecast, like you might have 
nice area of large cumulus moving across and you start to see holes forming in it like these. So that is possibly an indicator of overdevelopment. We can see on the plot there's these holes there. So it has overdeveloped so much that it's just totally dead. It's very important to watch out for this. And we can see enormous area has overdeveloped here. So another really important factor to consider when looking at overdevelopment is CAPE. So CAPE is roughly a measure of the positive buoyancy of air. So if we have a very high CAPE, which it doesn't look like we do around today, fortunately around John Darien, but we do have a large line of out west here, and particularly on the coast we often see very high CAPE, it uh, indicates that uh, there's quite a high possibility of parcels of air heated from the ground, punching straight through the inversion layer and potentially having unlimited vertical development. And we can see that on the skew T's, you see that pink dashed line, that's an indication of where that parcel of air is going to go. And for very high values of CAPE, we may well see very powerful storms. If we're seeing overdevelopment without high CAPE, it's likely to have some impact on soaring, but it's unlikely to develop beyond, say, light rain. So now I've got a general idea of where the cumulus are. Let's think about a task. So we can see from fairly early in the day, there's not much cue, and it develops first around us, which is nice. And it looks like it goes nicely south for a little way. And then, it, yeah, the day lasts quite long going down south. So on a day like today, I'd probably think about doing an out and return down to the south. So we've got roughly a window of 12.30 to 4.30, about four hours of soaring. So we might think about 300, 400 kilometers which is roughly what the potential flight distance told us. So now we have a pretty good understanding of when the day starts and ends, so let's try drawing a little task. So we might go from John Darien, just having a back look to the queue earlier in the day. Maybe we'll go a little bit north just to start with, while the queue develops a bit better down south. And then skipping through the day, we can see it's looking good down about 2.30 down to Warwick, maybe down to Warwick, and skipping ahead maybe to 3.30. It looks like the queue is now looking good out this way with a nice run home. So maybe we'll go to Inglewood and coming around to 4.30, probably about time to go home. And we'll have a look at the little plot it generates. That's about 390k, which is probably just achievable. So we've got a bit marginal queue on the first little bit here. It's not predicting very thick queue at all. And then it's looking a bit better and thicker going past Toowoomba. And then coming around Warwick, again, it's a little bit thin, and then we've just got some nice queue on the way home. It's only about 500,000 feet deep, which is just perfect, really. So it looks like a good little task we've planned out. I think that should be quite achievable in this weather. Now we've got a pretty good understanding of how the day is going to unfold. It's important to validate what we understand with the skew T function. So we have in the red here, this is the temperature through the various levels of the atmosphere, 0 to 10,000 feet. We've also got the pressure levels on the left here, and the blue line is the dew point. So as we go up, the temperature drops, and the dew point comes up, and when the red and the blue lines touch, we get clouds forming. So we've got a little bit of them touching here, so we're expecting just a little bit of development of cloud, not a lot. If they get thicker and closer together than that, We'll see if they do it some other time of day rather than about 5 p.m. Oh, they're a little bit thicker there, so we're still not expecting a whole lot of queue. And the pink line represents how high a parcel of hot air might be expected to go. So we can see it follows this and then continues up roughly through to the tops of the clouds. So sometimes we might see this pink line continue all the way up the top here. And that indicates there's nothing stopping a parcel of air from rising all the way to the top, which could indicate the formation of thunderstorm. We can see that the blue line is a little bit close to the red line up here. So there's a very small possibility of some cloud forming up at these kinds of attitudes, but it's not particularly likely. As the blue line and the red line get closer together, the possibility for cloud to form increases. And we can also see the skew T here, which shows the different winds through heights. So we'd see it's northerly pretty much all the way up until we get to about 10,000 feet, and then it kicks westerly and it stays westerly until eventually going southwest at attitude. So we'll just go over our checklist once more, just to review everything we've talked about. So we talked about how to identify the start and the end of thermals using both the height of thermals and the thermal strengths. We talked about using the potential flight distance chart 
telling us the possible maximum flight distance we might be able to fly. It's just a crude estimation. We talked about finding the cumulus and watching it develop through the day. We talked about the boundary layer and uh, the depth that involves. We talked about reading the winds using both the static charts, which are more accurate, and also using the dynamic live wind, which will overlay on just about any chart. We talked about spotting convergences. I'll have to do a more in-depth talk about that and some of the flights you might be able to do on those. We talked about looking for high cloud and mid-level cloud, just as a sanity check. We talked about overdevelopment, identifying overdevelopment through the area. And we talked about validating our understanding of what's happening with SKU-Ts. And finally, we talked about setting a little task. So I hope you've enjoyed this video session. Please uh, give me some feedback or give me a like, uh, depending whether you liked it or not. And uh, stay tuned for the next one.